So I finally got a chance to sit down and watch The Nightingale, which is the sophomore effort from director, writer Jennifer Kent, who did the very polarizing film The Babadook. Now I have my own personal opinion of that movie, um, which actually changed on my second viewing drastically. And I have always attributed that to the marketing of this movie, making it seem like it's going to be this monster movie. And when you go in and find out that it is more of a character study and a psychological thriller that is a slow burn, it just, it doesn't, it didn't land for me the first time. But then after I got a grip on what I knew I was going to go back into, about a year later I went back into it and I thought it was near perfect. I thought it was like straight up a masterpiece. I love that movie so much now. It's funny to think that I didn't care for it much the first time, but as I said, marketing can be uh, detrimental sometimes to a movie, and that's a good excuse. So this is a movie that I was really, really looking forward to because I was like, I I can't wait to see what uh, what this woman does next. And this is definitely a a change of pace. This is this is nothing like the Babadook in any way, shape, or form. This is about a young Irish woman named Claire who is in Tasmania, and she is a convict who was sentenced to seven years of servitude, but is being kept beyond that seven years by her master, uh, Lieutenant Hawkins. And him and a couple of his soldiers do something dreadfully awful to her, um, leaving her broken and yearning for revenge. So she go and she goes and enlists the help of an Aboriginal tracker named Billy, and they set off on a uh, a adventure. No, a uh, journey of revenge. Should I say? And, you know, first thing I want to say about this movie is that it is so authentic feeling. That was my, that was like my biggest takeaway while watching it was just the attention. We're getting a lot of this lately. You know, these period piece movies from these uh, really, really talented young horror directors, you know, with Robert Eggers. Um... And I've seen it. I've seen it. A, I've seen it a little. In obviously, Robert Eggers doing uh, The Witch and The Lighthouse, um, and I've seen other ones as well. And and just the attention to detail on costume design, set design, the palette of the movie, the look of characters, the way they speak, the casting involved, all of that stuff. It really does feel like you're in a time machine. It really does feel like you're kind of getting a glimpse into the past of what it really looked like. And it, that is just remarkable to me. It, it is masterclass filmmaking. I mean, everything feels so damn realistic. Um, and this is a very, I, I don't want to say beautiful movie because the movie is unbelievably dark at times. Like there is some seriously messed up stuff going on in this movie. Now, I had read in the IMDb credits that the gore and stuff was severe. I disagree with that, but the imagery and the subject matter, like what happens in the film, there are some moments where I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, man, this movie is relentless in scenes where you're like, damn, you hate the villainous characters in this movie. I mean, despise them. You are just begging for them to die. You want her to succeed. I was yearning for it. I never use yearning, and I think I've used it twice now in this review. <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a good descriptive word here. I was begging for their death, uh, you know, ever past the, past the initial opening sequence of what they do. And just as it goes on, they're worse and they're worse and they're worse. And this is, you know, a time where uh, slavery is is in full throttle. And the way they treat the aboriginals, the way they treat, the way they treat everybody, but 
This is a rough movie, man. This is a really rough movie to watch. You've got you've got like rape and and female abuse and slavery and just debauchery like it is a rough watch. This is not lighthearted. This is not a fun time. This is very much sitting back and being like, god damn people are horrible. Because you know that even though this story is fictional, that this stuff happens, and it happened. It happened a lot. And when you look back on these times in, uh, in the history of the world, it's just, it's embarrassing that human beings could ever act like this. The performances here, um, especially from our main, our main actress here, uh, she's phenomenal in the movie. She's absolutely fantastic. Um, now, I did, really like this movie. I didn't love this movie. And I'm, it's one of those movies where you watch it and you go, I completely understand why someone would love this movie. It's very artistic. It's very poetic at times. Um, One thing that I was surprised about is usually I'm the person who hates dream sequences. But the dream sequences in this aren't used for fake out scares or anything. They're used for disturbing imagery to put you in the headspace of our main character, of what she's dealing with emotionally. And that's really one of the only ways we could convey kind of the, uh, the damage inside of her. Like, I thought it was a really, really effective way to kind of put us in that, put us in that headspace she's in and just how you couldn't let this go. This isn't something where you could just take the high ground or, or forgive and forget or you know any of those things. Like She's too far gone. They hurt her too bad. And when you see it taking place and you see what happens and all that, it's, it, you understand it and you empathize. And I was, when I was watching this, I was just like, damn, man. You'd be, be, you'd be broken beyond consoling. There'd be no there'd be no talking to this person and rationalizing and being like, look, you know, this is beneath you. And they're not, no, she's beyond that. And the film is very beautiful in places. She's a singer and her songs are, 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 are very beautiful. And as I said, her performance is fantastic where I think the film didn't fully land for me. And the reason that I wasn't in love with the movie was there was some form of a disconnect for me when it came to the character of Billy and his relationship with Claire in the film. And I, I want to say it's his acting. It's not bad, but for me it wasn't great. And it actually took me out of moments because I felt like they were I, this kind of reminds me now he's nowhere near as bad as these because as I said I think he's fairly good but this kind of reminds me of when I watched the that Gran Torino movie with Clint Eastwood and how he wanted to cast um, uh, you know ethnically uh, appropriate characters for, for the roles that they were casting and the kids in that are just awful. Some of the worst acting I've ever seen in my entire life. Like when he locks him down in the basement and the kid's like, oh, you let me out of here. You better let me out of here. I'm not kidding with you. You better let me out of here. Like, I'm not exaggerating. That was the acting. It was unreal. I, I was sitting there in just shock because Clint Eastwood is really well known for casting amazing actors in some of the family. I mean, look at freaking Mystic River and Sean Penn's like, is that my daughter in their sequence and all that unreal stuff. I mean, some of the best acting you'll ever see. So for him to put that on screen, I was like, dude, are you losing your mind? Like, <laughs> Are you too old to make films? Now, as I said, he's nowhere near that, but they wanted to go for a very authentic feel to the aboriginals and they feel um, like they belong in that geography of, of, of the world. And I looked up the acting credits for this guy, and I think this is, if I remember correctly, this is his only film, or maybe he had one other credit, and that that credit had either become 
before this or was in production now and was was gonna happen i think that's what it was i think this was his first role and it shows for me it did i'm not saying he's bad but it did take me out of it a little bit and i really wanted to connect with that character and i wanted to connect with their connection in the movie the their uh you know unlikely pairing their unlikely f- uh, inevitable friendship or whatever you want to call it. I, I don't even know if I call it a friendship, but maybe just kind of an understanding that they're both uh, living in horrible times to be either a woman or, um, you know, a black person in that, in that area at that time. Um, so it's kind of like a mutual understanding between one another. And it is good to watch their relationship grow throughout because, you know, she's, She's kind of a a product of her element as well with him in the opening and the beginning of this. And she sees him as property. And throughout the film, of course, that that morphs and alters, but not overly dramatic for thematical purposes. You know, it feels very organic. It's just the relationship between them never felt genuine because I could never really attach myself to him as a real character because it felt like his lines were being delivered um, as if he was reading them. Not horribly, but do you guys get what I mean on that? I hope you do. Um, so I really want to f- say that that's, and the movie, it has a slower pace, but it never really felt that way to me. I never was bored. I can't say that. I was always engaged because I was so invested in her quest, in her, you know, in her uh, revenge, that I, I was like, anticipating the next sequence. All right, are we going to get to him? Are we going to get to him? But it kind of reminds me of something like The Revenant, you know, a period piece, a revenge tale that's very realistic and uh, looks uh, time appropriate and is a slow burn. And we don't get the same level of catharsis and payoff as we do in The Revenant. Because like that final fight between Tom Hardy and Leonardo DiCaprio in that movie, there's some brutality in it, and it, it is fairly cathartic. And this one, it's more poetic, and and not as like um, gruesome or something as you would might want it to be, because you want these people to be brutalized, and they're and they're really not. And I know I guess that's kind of spoilerish, but um, it, it's not going to go in the way you think it's going to go. Let's just say that so I don't feel like it's a spoiler. It's just it's a revenge tale. We know ultimately what, what what's going to what's going to take place. But in the way it takes place, it's that's a whole other thing. And you, you'll figure that out in the film when you watch it. But very good movie. Very good second effort from from Jennifer Kent. I think uh, the Babadook is the superior film, um, just from a story story. And and it's mostly because of uh, the performance. Uh, from from the lead in that movie is just S.C. Davis is unreal like Academy Award winning perfection which is kind of funny because I feel like the the last like couple years has been snubbed female actresses in horror whether that be Toni Collette in Hereditary or as I said um, in The Babadook those are two of S.C. Davis two of the best performances from females or from anybody that I've seen and and nothing not even like a like oh well we're considering them bullshit bullshit but yeah this performance from this from this young lady I I don't know what her name is I I I did look it up but I I had already, I've already kind of forgotten it's it's like Aisling something beautiful girl really really great in this movie and it's a haunting film, man. It's it's going to stick with you. It, the, the stuff that goes down in this movie, shit. Man, hard stuff to watch. Hard stuff to watch. Not for the faint of heart, for sure. Anybody who has any issues with um, younger characters dying, let's just say that, you might want to avoid this. So, anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this movie when you watch it. Adios. <laughs>